you wanted the best, you've got the best podcast. The hottest, hottest. podcast in the world. In the world. The Chris Voss Show, the preeminent podcast with guests so smart you may experience serious brain bleed. The CEOs, authors, thought leaders, visionaries, and motivators. Get ready, get ready. Strap yourself in. Keep your hands, arms, and legs inside the vehicle at all times because you're about to go on a monster education roller coaster with your brain. Now, here's your host, Chris Voss. Hi, folks, this is Voss here from the Chris Voss Show.com. The Chris Voss Show.com. Welcome to the big show, my family and friends. We certainly appreciate you. I don't know why anybody applauds for me hitting that high note. I don't know why I still have to do it after 15 bloody years, but I love how you guys come up to me at shows and go, The Chris Voss Show! And I yell, Security! So there you go. Uh, I don't know why that sticks, but uh, we. We did it for a week, and then we started getting calls around the world that, that I had stopped, and they're like, you have to keep doing it. And I'm like, why? It was a bit for a week. And now 15 years later, here we are. 1,500 episodes, folks, two to three new shows uh, a weekday, 10 to 15 new shows a week. And uh, what do you want more from me? Holy crap. Listen to the shows. You're going to learn so much. We've had some of the greatest people on the show. And you know what? We only have the greatest people on the show. Except for me, of course, but uh, the guests are the greatest people on the show. And uh, you learn so much from them. We had so many brilliant discussions. It's unfathomable. Somewhere over 1,500 episodes uh, that we're heading towards now. I think 16 we're going to cross over soon. So uh, keep watching the show. But as always, this is the point that we set up to uh, guilt and shame you to refer the show to your family, friends, relatives. Goodreads.com, forward slash Chris Voss. YouTube.com, forward slash Chris Voss. LinkedIn.com, forward slash Chris Voss. The newsletter, uh, YouTube.com, forward slash Chris Voss. And then uh, TikTok. We're killing on TikTok finally. Or, or we're starting to. We're making some traction over here with the new AI cut-up we're using. Uh, we have an amazing gentleman on the show. He's going to be talking to us about his business sense, his business acumen, his business knowledge, his business experience, and all of those four different things that I just said probably all mean the same thing, but they sounded cool to say. Got to love those buzzwords. Uh, we have a gentleman, Matthew Stafford, is on the show with us today. Not the NFL guy. This guy is smarter than that. I don't know. I, that's probably rude to say about the NFL gentleman. I'm sure he's fairly smart, but, uh, you know, he doesn't play for the Lions. So, oh, Wow, I just lost all two Lions fans. Uh, Matthew Stafford is a CEO and managing partner of Build, Grow, Scale. Why are we throwing shade at NFL players today? I don't know. We'll look into it. Uh, he's an, also an equity owner of some in-house e-commerce brands and has knowledge and expertise enabling to mentor thousands of store owners through paid e-commerce groups and live events. Over three decades, Matthew has been an entrepreneurial and successfully building gentleman who uh, has several businesses across various industries, including concrete, brick and mortar locations, pod, and software based ventures. His experiences also allowed him to help hundreds of e commerce brands scale past the million dollar mark, many hitting 10 million plus mark. To top it off, he's been speaking on stages about e-commerce optimization for the past seven years, and he's going on eight with the show, and he's here on the Chris Foss Show. Welcome to the show, Matthew. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for having me. There you go. I wasn't sure how close you were to eight, but I thought I'd help you round up. I don't know yeah, what there that you go. means. <laughs> uh, so give us your dot-coms. Where do you want people to find you on the interweb, sir? Um, Buildgrowscale.com is the easiest way, and... Uh, we basically have everything that we do there. And if uh, they want to book a call, ask questions, get a hold of us, they can do that there too. There you go. So give us a 30,000 overview of the website, what you do and how you do it. Yeah. So um, it started off, I had my own brand and I was actually very good at Facebook ads. And this is about 10 years ago um, when they were first coming out um, and they worked really well. And I just, I had run, Sold about $15 million for the t-shirts in two wow. years using Facebook ads. And so <laughs> um, I was known for that. And when we started a brand on Shopify, uh, it started off great. And then we started having, you know, a bunch of trouble with it. And oh. every time the Facebook would change their algorithm, uh. our sales would go from hundreds per day down to less. And so it was just like this constant frustration. And finally, what I did was um, I had a guy 
charged me a thousand dollars to give me six weeks coaching on Google analytics. Mm -hmm. And essentially what that was, it was tracking the data of what was happening on the store itself Mm -hmm. to see what people were doing. And as soon as I could see that my brain started going, Oh, I can make this better. And so now um, it was no longer the ads that were responsible for all the sales, but when they got to the website, the clarity of the website in order for them to make a decision. And one of the taglines that we have is traffic's not your problem because a typical website, um, if, if whether it's leads or sales two two 2%, which means for every hundred people that come there, two people give you money or put in their emails. And so everybody else thought, and I did at the time, just go buy more traffic. You'll get more sales. Um, and instead when I saw the data, I was like, that doesn't make any sense. 98 people, 98 other people came to the site, but they didn't buy. Um, if I get two more of them, I doubled my business. Oh, wow. And so that was, that was kind of my journey to understanding the website, um, and how the customer interacted with it. That's really created the entire business. There you go. Now your build is the mad scientist behind the data and development of the BGS revenue optimization system. Uh, I believe that's the name of your company, Build, uh, Grow, uh, as well as the revenue optimization team of over 40 full-time experts you have. And uh, you're known as the top Shopify optimization optimization expert in the game. Uh, Is that true? Um, I would say probably top five, yeah. Who knows? There you go. Yeah. Awesome sauce. So we're going to learn a lot today. So give us your origin story, your uh, journey. Uh, how did you get into this business? Uh, so I was actually in the concrete business uh, and I had built that up to the point where we were only doing commercial concrete. So we were traveling around the country. I was on the, on the road about 200 days a year. Oh, wow. And so I wasn't home a lot. And I went to a Tony Robbins event and uh he was selling a dvd series called money masters Mm -hmm. and so i signed up for that and the very first month i got a dvd it was from frank kern and it was about how to sell ebooks to teach your parrot how to talk Mm -hmm. and i thought wow that was i mean he gave some numbers i thought wow that's crazy he was making more money selling this little book about how to teach your parrot than i was um out on the road for 200 days a year pouring concrete Wow. And I thought, all right, I want to learn how to do this. Up until then, I'd only used my computer to send emails or blueprints or things like that. And so uh, I set a goal within five years to be 100% online. And mm-hmm. that's about about a month to the fifth year, about a month away from the fifth year. That's when it happened. There you go. Well, congratulations. Uh, and so now this parlayed into this. You said at one point you were selling shirts online, and then you, and then you figured out how to help other people do it. What are some of the services that you offer over on the site? I see some different things like boot camp and mentoring and partnerships. Yeah. Tell us about courses, etc. Yeah. So we we uh, do an audit, which is where you can have us take a look at your store, and we'll point out the things that we see that are creating confusion or hurting your conversions. Mm -hmm. Um, That's a simple way to get to know us. Uh, If you want a little deeper dive, that uh, boot camp is three days, about 90 minutes a day for three days. And we go through the different areas of the business and kind of just show you what you can look for, what are best practices, um, red flags, things that you can do to make more money so that your store can be more successful. And then at that point, uh, we'll make you an offer. There's no pressure because there's no scarcity to it. We're going to keep doing this for a long time. And so if you want to, you can join our membership. And if not, um, you can just take what you learned and, you know, do it yourself and you'll still make more money. There you go. There you go. Uh, So a lot to offer there and helping people. So is it uh, any sort of e-commerce site? Is it specifically to Shopify and uh, or or just any e-commerce that's uh, selling something online? Yeah, to be, it can really, the principles, we don't teach like tricks and hacks of the platform. So it's really mm-hmm. the principles of how people interact with the site. So yeah, mm-hmm. it doesn't really matter the platform. I'd say we're platform agnostic. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Shopify has done such a good job mm-hmm. of like capturing the market. Um, it just, 
they're probably going to be eight out of 10 Shopify or, you know, e-commerce sites. And then you'll have a few WooCommerce, stuff like that. A um, mm-hmm. little bit of big commerce other than that. But yeah, no, the principles work across all of them. There you go. Uh, so uh, tease us out, if you would, some effective strategies for uh, improving e-commerce conversion rates, if you would. Yeah. So I'll give you one right away that will make more money. And it's it's literally never not one. So um, if you go to your checkout and people look there and it will say email and then all the other information, and then in the bottom it says phone. Mm-hmm. Well, um, the checkout is closest to the money. So that's where we always work first. And when you do, if you make a difference there, it instantly translates into more sales, more money. Mm-hmm. And so we're always trying to optimize that to make it better. Well, I use the theory that people don't mind giving you what you ask for as long as you give them a reason why. Uh-huh. And they've done all kinds of studies like that, like, oh, I want to cut in line. And people are like, no, but you go, oh, I need to cut in line because my kids are running late for school. Then I'll sudden <laughs> they'll let you. And they've tested that a bunch of different ways. Mm-hmm. And so um, we know that because uh, we track the form field errors, a lot of times people give you a junk email. Uh, <laughs> And so what we did is a lot, really. Wow. Yeah. And the truth of the matter is your order confirmation email gets opened 85% of the time. Mm -hmm. And so what we say is uh, email required for your order confirmation. So we Mm -hmm. put that text in the form field and what they'll do, because they know that they're, they want to go see the email confirmation that they'll give you their best email. And so by doing that, um, we had less errors on the checkout. Mm-hmm. We actually had better um, card abandonment recovery because we were getting their best email and uh, it just converted higher. So the second part is you go down to the phone and we always tell everybody the only reason why you don't require the phone and do SMS marketing is if you don't like money. So mm-hmm. it's it's literally taken over as far as like the largest revenue generator, as far as abandoned carts or Uh, abandoned checkouts and so for there we put um, phone required for shipping notifications so Uh one is for the order and then the sms is for shipping notification everybody wants to know when it's going to be shipped too yeah and so by doing that uh we reduced the form field errors increased the conversion and also um had much better abandoned recovery wow and then you're not going to get like fake phone numbers either no because people want to you think that's brilliant just those little it, it seems like you guys are really good at finding those just those little dial-ins you know yeah the one thing i remember you know with all of our companies is you know you can be struggling to find some sort of innovation or some way to make something work and it's almost like that little safe where if you can just turn that dial and sometimes it's just really it's the right combo or sometimes a little adjustment and you're like bing it's open yeah yeah there you go same as your website a lot of people um, think like, oh, you got to check the, you got to test the button color, you got to test all these different things. Mm-hmm. What we found, because we have tested all of that stuff, um, colors don't matter near as much as the concept of like the button needs to be a totally different site than anything else on the site, a mm-hmm. d- different color than anything else on the site. And the reason for that is you always want your next most valuable action that you want them to take on the page to stand out. Mm -hmm. And so they'll literally go through your site if you've optimized it from the front to the back. And it just felt good to buy because like everything was laid out, it was very clear. Um, And so by doing that, like make sure that your buttons stand out and nothing else is that color. A lot of times we see people, if, if their theme is blue and pink, then they'll put pink buttons or they'll put blue buttons but then that matches and a whole bunch of other stuff. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Here on the Chris Voss show, um, there's a buy button right there in the blue, but it's labeled blue. So you can't see it or no, I'm just kidding. There's a, there's a buy button over right over here. Uh, yeah. anyway. Uh, yeah, I can see why that makes sense. I have been on websites where you're like, how the hell do I get out of here? And where do I, I, I need to use a different credit card. And like, how do I switch the credit card? I was having that problem really today on TikTok. Uh, we bought an ad, uh, another ad campaign on TikTok that we ran, but I wanted to put it on a different card. And I, for life of me, I couldn't figure out how to put it on a different card. Like I went through like a billion memos, me, yeah. uh, menus, 
and memos menus. And uh, how much have I had to drink today? Jesus. Uh, <laughs> and I don't drink. That's the weird thing. Um, and I couldn't figure it out. So finally, I was just like, fucking, fucking, just leave it on whatever card it's on. Uh, and that was the example. I mean, of TikTok. Yeah. You know? So uh, again, um, what I tell people, they always go, oh, well, what, what can I do to my site? I'm like, I don't know. There's probably a lot of things you can do to your site. Um, <laughs> the, the thing that is easiest for me to explain that will create a shift for you is you've always looked at your site as the owner and how do you make more sales? Mm -hmm. And if you come to your site, like go to your site um, on a new device and then mm -hmm. give yourself like some tasks to do and see if it's easy or hard. Don't just click on stuff that you know where to go. See if it's labeled, um, if it's there's a bunch of clutter, all these different things. But go on the site as the customer looking to solve a problem and see how it works then. And a lot of times that little shift, you'll see a whole bunch of things on your site that you never noticed before because you have banner blindness to them. Wow. You know, I, I, approaching your business with kind of fresh eyes and being sitting down and going, if I was new and I didn't know, you know, I'd never been to my site before, how does yeah. this look from the outside? You know, I sometimes with our with our phone systems and our and our companies in, in all the different places, stuff would go when it would come through the operators. Um, sometimes I would just randomly call in uh, anonymously and 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 go through my system like hey, can I talk to a salesperson? And then it was kind of interesting, some of the experiences I had. Like sometimes yeah. uh, a secretary would pick up uh, the phone and, and and she'd be talking and not <laughs> answering the phone. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Uh, and, or, and then, you know, five minutes later, she go, hi, how are you doing? I'm sorry, I was talking to somebody. What's up? Uh, you know, and you're like, you, you just got the boss on the call, man. Yeah. Um, and, and seeing how the calls would flow through my system nowadays, you know, that was in brick and mortar days nowadays. Yeah. You've got to look at your site from the outside and try and look at it with those fresh eyes or get people that can advise you and look at your site with fresh eyes. What do you find most people is the, is the sort of the top things people struggle with their e-commerce site? What do you, what do you find most people come to you for help with? Um, certainly to get their site to convert higher. Um, but what we find is a lot of times uh, people do their own customer service early on. And so every single person that writes in a question, they think that that now needs to be answered on the website. And what they've done <laughs> is they've literally put so much stuff on the website to answer all the questions and clear everything up that now the people that don't need to know all that are forced to go through everything oh, yeah. in, in order to check out. And so they've actually made the process worse, not better. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so typically we'll use the customer service um, and look at the trends of what people are asking and then find a way to answer that question on the proper page. That's the other thing. A lot of times they're like, oh, they had this question. So that goes on the home page, that goes on the product page, but yet their question might have had something to do with the cart and they just think like oh in order for them to get the sale it needs to be answered well it's not even when those people are thinking that and i always tell people that there's typically two reasons why people don't buy from your site one they don't trust you or two they have an unanswered question and you know your website is your conversation with your client and so if it's not a good communicator you're not mm -hmm. going to create a lot of relationships which are your long-term clients yeah, it's uh, it's interesting how uh, I've seen that. I, like the the biggest pet peeve for me is if you send me to a site where I'm going to be dealing with, uh, you know, hey, um, oh, you want your question answered? Can you go to our forum that has like five thousand posts, and you can probably find the answer you're looking for there? Yeah. I'm like, are you freaking out of your freaking mind? Yeah. Like, what the hell? Yeah, customer service for sure is a lost art. Um, we deal with a lot of uh, really good, high-quality brands. And I will tell you, the ones that are very successful and have been for a long time uh, usually do customer service very, very well. The ones mm -hmm. that try to outsource it or you know, hit two and then go here and then do that, like uh, the rest of their companies in chaos too. And everybody looks at them as like, oh, they're the 
big one that's doing this, it must work. No, they already own their media. So a lot of times that allows them to get away with stuff that you can't do as a smaller operator. The ones that make it are the ones that have great customer service. There you go. Uh, it's it, it customer service. You're right, is a lost art. I mean, I, it's so insane what uh, what people put you through, and it's almost like they just really don't want to talk to you or um, or have a conversation at all. Uh, my favorite ones are when you uh, file a ticket or try to get some customer service. They go, "We normally take three days to respond because things are busy now," and I'm like, "Could you could you just basically communicate any bigger f you to the fact that you know." You you don't have. We're you, you really busy, but customers. we can't afford to have more customer service. Yeah. Take care of the. Yeah. yeah. Meanwhile, they're they're in they're in a meeting, which is probably what they're doing. Going, hey, why can't we get our sales up? Why aren't we making more sales? Yeah. <laughs> you got all of the irony there. Yeah. Um, what are some of the other struggles that you see that you you help uh, your customers resolve? Um, probably a non typical answer is. Uh, if you think about it, when the CEO of a company gets coaching mm -hmm. and the business increases, it didn't mm -hmm. require all the rest of the team to get it, but typically the leader. Really? And so um, what I've noticed is uh, when you do some mindset work or coaching with the owner of the site, uh, the site does better. And it's because they're now looking at their diff they're looking at their business different. They're treating their people different, which in turn, treats the customers different. And so, yeah, I always say um, we notice a huge difference when the owner starts investing in himself, mm -hmm. not just from the business standpoint, but who they are. And oh. the business tends to do much better. So better leadership, better culture improvement. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Wow. I was expecting you were going to say, you know, if they, if they understand their business better, you know, like metrics, analyzing it, strategies all that sort of stuff then they know more about how to game the system but just by that's really interesting man that is very interesting yeah i mean obviously the the things that you mentioned are going to help too though they're sure. just good business practices but as long i i have found and i've witnessed it just because of how many we've been able to work with mm -hmm. that the ones that do that uh tend to excel way faster they tend to take action quicker. They mm -hmm. pivot quicker. Uh, you know, businesses, businesses, uh, it's hard and it's a game. And so you got to, you got to go into it, um, you know, to win the war. And that means that you got to be able to take the lumps along with the other stuff. And a lot of times uh, you got to learn how to not take it personal. Oh yeah, definitely. But, and, and, you know, we've, we've, I've written about leadership. We've talked about leadership uh, extensively on the show. Um, that's really interesting to me that the difference of culture makes a difference in how your company works, probably the difference in how your customer service is. Um, you know, if people aren't happy, the job and miserable, their customer service is usually horrible. You basically get a feel of, of their resentment of the job that comes through. I mean, I could probably name a few big companies that, that uh, don't treat their employees very well and, 95% of the employees you come in contact with, you can tell. And, you know, you can't really blame the employee a little bit, but, um, you know, it's you, you can tell what's going on there. Every now and then you meet a gem of an employee who they don't care how bad the employer is. They're, they're just great at what they do, and you should hire that person if you can find them. Yeah. There's a few people where I've met them, and, you know, I remember meeting a cashier at Walmart one time, and this uh, – and, and my local Walmart has started doing this thing where they put in 5,000 of those self-serve things. And they purposely hide and turn off the aisle for full service or whatever you want to call it, getting getting a cashier. Mm -hmm. And so, like, literally you have to ask and say, hey, where the hell is it, you know, a cashier? I don't work for you. I'm not stocking your shelves and I'm not bagging my own groceries. Um, and And one of the gentlemen came over, a young guy. And I was just pissed off because I'm very pissed off about it. And uh, uh, and he was so gracious. One, hey, he's like, hey, how's your day, man? How you doing? He was like friendly and stuff, and I just just uh, just a nice guy. And he like totally changed my mood. And uh, you know, I made some comment. I go, ah, you know, I don't like this uh, thing where we got to do this self thing. It's being kind of forced on us. I mean, what next? I got to unload the trucks. Um, 
and uh easily you know hey you know i don't like it either man but it's cool man I, i'm gonna help you out here and we're gonna we're gonna uh we're gonna get through this here you know yeah the, and so that that sort of person can make all the difference in your um in your in your experience but that's really interesting that it's not it's not even so much about how the business is run from the mechanics of it yeah. but just the leadership the health of a uh, uh, uh well a healthy culture as it were uh can make all the difference uh, let's talk about you know, there's different sites that sell the same thing why does mm -hmm. one thrive and the other one doesn't yeah um, and a, nine times out of ten it is the leadership and how they um go after getting the customer and take care of it. And a lot of times it's not even pricing. You know, the company that has a higher price of the same product, they're winning. Wow. That is just amazing. Yeah. That's brilliant. All right. So we learned something new today. Uh, that's, that's great data. Um, so uh, metrics wise, how important is, this seems like a dumb question, but it's better to hear it from a professional like you. Um, how important is it to, understand metrics to have metric measurements to really be looking at the analytics of your site so you can help improve those uh conversions yeah so i i would say that they're critical um it's garbage in garbage out so if you don't know the data um you're not making good decisions mm -hmm. and a lot of times uh without really good data we make assumptions and you know so we have really good data and we do split testing and optimization all the time. Mm -hmm. And even with that, like more than half of our tests don't win. And really? so as a store owner, um, without the data, uh, you can see why they can struggle for years. And then once they start using the data, why all of a sudden there's such a big difference. It's because one, you're throwing a bunch of stuff against the wall trying to figure out which which part of it's working and then do more of that. Well, it takes you back to that old adage like, yeah, I know that 50% of my advertising is working. I just don't know which 50%. The only way you're going to know that is by having good, clean data. And then you can stop doing the 50% that's not working and double down on the part that is. And, uh, you know, you could get away with n not using your data years ago. Uh, now the the landscape of e-commerce is competitive enough for websites that uh, you have to, you have to be professional. You have to do a good job. And if you don't, um, your competitors are just going to eat your lunch. There you go. Uh, well, being professional definitely helps as well. Um, let me ask you this. Cause I, I hate doing AB testing and I'm just like, Oh, I'll, you know, ABCD testing. Um, it's just like, I always, I always would just like have that fantasy of just like, can we just make copy and it works and we just go, yeah. but, uh, how important is AB testing and optimizing it and all that stuff? And do you have to keep constantly testing for, to try and find a better way? What's a good strategy for that maybe? Yeah. So we do, um, we actually have, uh, we have a course on our site. Um, it's fairly inexpensive, but it's a really, really good course called User Testing Mastery. Mm -hmm. And uh, I honestly believe it's probably the best program that we've ever produced. And it's also that strategy has um, been responsible for the largest wins that we've ever had across the sites that we do. And mm -hmm. essentially what it is, is you create a very specific task set for someone to do and then they go to your site and do that while they're um, video on their screen and narrating what they're doing. And oh. so by doing that, you actually see where they struggle, what their impression is, if they understand how to navigate, all the different things that you gave them to do. Mm -hmm. And in that, um, we'll find a lot of very big wins. Go back, fix that on the site, and then we have um, obviously more money. Another thing that we do that anybody can do is on their thank you page, um, put a little pop up that asks a question. What's one thing that almost made you not buy? Oh. And what they'll do is they'll tell you what their struggle was or what they didn't understand or what was hard for them to figure out. And then you go back and fix that on the site. And when you do that, uh, you'll get a lot of wins that way too. There you go. I, I there's one site that I have that I'm a I, I'm a favorite of their brand and they make great products that are very healthy. Um, so it's hard to dissuade me from their brand, but they do have a weird thing on mobile where when I'm uh, going to their site and buying things, their pop up pops up and takes up half the screen. Yeah, 
and it's like, hey, can we help you? I'm like, yeah. no, get the f- off of my screen and yeah. <laughs> let me look at your site, damn it. Yeah, we were we were actually looking at the data um, today on one of our partner stores, and uh, the number one most clicked button was the close to pop up. And we're like, <laughs> uh, there you go. Um, that's a pretty good oh indicator God. that people are in the middle of doing something. And they closed that rather than leave. So that means that they had intent to do something and you like interrupted that buying process. Or what's worse is you can't figure out where that little X is that's so damn small for old people like me with bad eyes and bad brains. And we're just like, I'm just going to close the whole, just give up. Yeah. Um, and, and sometimes I'll actually do that with the site I reference and be like, I'll, I'll just go order when I'm on my computer, yeah. um, you know, and, and then and then I get the uh, card abandonment and text messages. Yeah. And I, I don't mind. I love them as a company, but still, I mean, they're losing business from whoever is in a loyal customer yeah, like me. Yeah, 100%. Yep. Yeah. And then, of course, the sales have to wait an, a few more days and they're probably sitting around having meetings going, why does it take so long for these carts to fulfill? Like, yeah, what, or there's, you know, you would have consumed more of their product if you had could keep That's buying true. it whenever you're ready. Yeah. That's actually true. And in one case, I couldn't get their their whole thing to work. And I needed, uh, in this case, uh, you know, I, I lift weights. So I need a protein that uh, was isolate. And I just went and bought another brand because I needed it right away. Yeah. And by the time they their site got, you know, whatever was going on with it. I was like, I just bought another brand. And when the when the, the cart rep, they have some sort of conversion where the cart rep, if you ask for help, uh, a, a guy will say, hey, do you need help? And uh, you can write it back. And I was just like, dude, I, you just lost the sale to me. Yeah. And in some cases, uh, you know, I, I still love the brand. But in some cases, that can be a whole, you know, brand loyalty that goes someplace else. Yeah, 100%. And yeah. gets addicted to the other brand. They're lucky I haven't had that happen. Yeah. Um you know, it's interesting tracking the metrics, knowing what's going on in your website. Uh, I love the idea of, of watching someone else go through the website with fresh eyes. Um, you know, my, my mom's 80 years old and, and, and she's still, you know, adapting technology and she does pretty good. But uh, it, is, there any, um, is there any thought to maybe putting somebody who's not too tech savvy on your website and watching how they process it to see how easy that works for them, maybe? I don't know. Yeah, so that's exactly what we do. Um, in that user <laughs> testing, we use a service mm-hmm. where you can put in your age demographic. You can put oh, really? Them, whether they have kids or whatever, and then only that type of person will go through it. Um, mm-hmm. And so we definitely have done it with uh, an older audience, and we do notice the things that aren't labeled or mm-hmm. symbols that they don't understand, all of those things um, – when you put labels to them, then what we say is make it so simple that Homer Simpson would know how to do it. So <laughs> not everybody no. understands that those three lines are a menu. Mm-hmm. That sounds silly to us because we've been shopping yeah. online for years. But before COVID, only about um, 10% of sales were done online. Uh-huh. During COVID, it went up to 33%. And then wow. now it's back down to like 27 right. So, I mean, believe it or not, I mean, e-commerce hasn't been around that long and so it's evolving and changing and we're getting new people buying stuff online all the time Mm -hmm. and you know i i have a website that's a favorite of mine i've been going to it for years and it has those three lines and i still like every now and then be like where where the hell is the menu again yeah yeah so just label it menu cart yeah and make you make the lines a little bigger for uh the old people eh yeah. <laughs> you know, our eyes aren't as good. We're like looking at the site and and you know, when you look at the you know, all the functions that are on the site, like the menus and the buttons and everything, and then in the upper left hand corner there's just these little small three little yeah. script lines that you're just like yeah. what what is that? Is that an error on my screen or a smudge? And and you know, everything else is like and huge. Uh, and and then you know you got three little lines and you're like, how do I get to the menu? Um, yeah, I was having the worst time today with TikTok or last night with TikTok. It, I think it rolled in today where I could not figure out how to change my credit card for the life of me. And, and I'm like, okay, well, finally I give up that, you know, thank God there's stuff on whatever the other credit card was, but I wanted it. I wanted it on this other one so we could track it. And, um, 
I just couldn't figure it out. And uh, I'm like, what, what would happen if there wasn't any money on that credit card? And, uh, you know, so you're going to ping, you're going to prove the ad and then it won't go through. And then you're going to send me a message or, you know, it, it's just insane what people go through. Do you, I, you know, maybe you should have a thing where you, you put people that are like a hundred years old and they're, and they try and figure out your website. I don't know. That might be fun. Could that yeah. be a reality TV? Yeah. Show? That, I was just going to say, we could do that as a, um, <laughs> as a podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Where's Sean the thing? <laughs> How come I'm not hearing the AOL scream? I'm just kidding, people. Uh, you've got mail. <laughs> you've got mail. How come I have to send? It took me the longest time to convince my mom that you didn't need MSN or AOL to access the internet. Yeah. She's like, I don't understand. But uh, she's got it now. She's got it down pretty good. Um, what are some other aspects we haven't talked about? You've got a lot of stuff on your website. The online courses for user tester mastery product page optimization competition buster you've got a podcast as well do you want to give a plug for that um yeah so we have a bunch of episodes that we're done under it's called optimize e-commerce mm -hmm. uh we're starting a new one that uh, i'm very excited about because there's three of us as a host so it's kind mm -hmm. of a um gets a more perspective than just my own and uh it's called building a brand and so we will start uh there will be a link to that uh within the next couple of weeks as we uh, start producing the shows. So we got about 10 done and uh, we just have to release them. So there you go. And then uh, on the, uh, you run the Ecom Profit Bootcamp. Yeah, that's at three, that's that three day bootcamp. Yep. There you go. And is that just uh, anytime the customer is available or is there a, is there yeah, so uh, we do it every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So it's uh, 33 bucks, which is really, really reasonable. Um, the entire point of it is we want them to have a chance to get to know, like, and trust us and uh, mm -hmm. see that what we're doing and the results. And then once they do that, they, t they tend to become a customer a lot quicker. There you go. And it looks like you've got BGS services where – you do the work for people and uh, you have your trained re revenue optimization experts talk through and plan and do all that. And they have yeah. the mentorship where they can join uh, other people. Is that a community where people can join yeah. that? Yeah, that's the stuff? community. Um, it's a monthly mm -hmm. membership. And then the mm -hmm. um, Amplified Partners is where we partner with you. Uh, oh, wow. We do all the data analytics. We do all the split testing. Uh, we have our devs do the work on the site, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And that's the scale part of the build and grow scale. Mm -hmm. And then you guys uh, get a cut of the action? Uh, yes. Yep. There you go. There you yeah. go. Uh, well, this is very insightful, man, and uh, wonderful to see what's going on and making a change there. Uh, anything more we want to tease out before we go? No, I think it's good. I mean, come try us out or go through the challenge or have us do an audit. Uh, I think that you'll find um, what we see is uh, pretty eye-opening. There you go. There you go. And uh, you can learn how more, how to sell more. Everyone That's wants right. to sell more, get more conversions, and be more successful. Well, Matthew, it's been wonderful to have you on the show. Give us your .com so people can find you on the interwebs. Yeah, buildgrowscale.com. There you go. And uh, thank you very much for coming on. Yeah, I appreciate you having me. There you go. Thanks so much for tuning in. Go to goodreads.com, Fortress Chris Foss, YouTube.com, Fortress Chris Foss, LinkedIn.com, Fortress Chris Foss, and all those crazy places on the internet like TikTok, Chris Foss One. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Be good to each other. Stay safe, and we'll see you guys next time. And that should have us out.